steamship CF Curtis in 2021 and the barge Sheldon E. Marvin in 2022. Joining us now to talk about these significant discoveries is maritime historian Rick Mixer. Thank you for being here, Rick. Well, thrilled to be here to talk about maritime history. Absolutely. So a couple questions here for you. So can you give us a little bit of a background on what these ships were and what happened on November 18th, 1914, and what caused them to disappear? You bet. In 1914, that fall month of uh, October was just tragic for the Heinz fleet. Edward Heinz was one of the largest lumber dealers in all of the world. He had coast-to-coast -coast operations, and especially in northern Michigan, Ashland, Wisconsin, and uh, the Minnesota area. And he had a fleet, the largest fleet of lumber carriers. And then, of course, the Curtis was the steamer that pulled the two bar the barges, Marvin and Peterson, along with them. And sadly, he went into a storm, and all three of those ships disappeared. They lost another one called the Oscoda down on Lake Michigan, too. It's fascinating stuff, just that whole fleet uh, as well. So how was the rediscovery of these shipwrecks impacted, uh, impactful on Michigan's history? As we look at the history, you know, most of it's been forgotten. If we don't have a song like Gordon Lightfoot's on the Fitzgerald, we forget about a lot of these stories. So by discovering these vessels, especially this well intact, we can actually read Heinz Lumber on the side of the ships. It, it gives us that chapter, what happened. And it also helps us to build by looking at the ships, by seeing the tow lines, you know, and where they're directed and the damage and the types of things that we see on board the ships. It builds that entire story up, almost like a CSI investigation. So we get to see back now over a hundred years to find out what happened because 28 people died, not a single survivor made it. And this is really their legacy. And it's also fascinating, of course, that we have the chance to, you know, see these shipwrecks uh, preserved in our Great Lakes waters that preserve them uh, so well. And something else you kind of touched on here is that the Curtis and the Marvin weren't the only ships that were lost in 1914. So has any progress been made in finding the Annie M. Peterson? As we look at the, the records of the Lifesavers, they said that it was on the beach and they gave us a location eight miles down from Grand Marais. We looked and there's nothing there, but there is a shipwreck about six miles from there that a lot of people call the Peterson. We've taken measurements that we don't believe that that is the Peterson. So we're going to look in that general vicinity. We see the way the tow line is moving from the Marvin. That gives us a good indication that maybe the Marvin was in the center of these three ships and the end one would probably be where that line leads us to. So we're very anxious to get the Boyd, our research vessel together and uh, get out there now that the ice is gone. Well, it's very fascinating stuff, Rick. Thank you very much for joining us. And if you have uh, any ideas on what you would like to see on our show, you can send them to us at WNEM-4PMNews at WNEM.com. Just use the subject line 4PMNews Spotlight. Well, that was